search of the three missing Montgomery College students continues in Frederick County tonight. Ten days and thousands of man hours have been unable to produce any clues. We have a few leads, a um, few other options who we want to take advantage of and just try to put together some, uh, some pieces to this puzzle. Do you believe the occult may be involved in the disappearance of your son? The Flame Witch Project, Sunday at 1 a.m. Mountain on Shadow Lane. From a small town in Texas, Renee Zellweger has worked her way to the top in Hollywood. After parts in movies like Empire Records, Love and 45s, and the return of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Zellweger got her first big break. Wish me luck. Whoa, hey! First time I Cry at the beginning of a day. Yeah. Cry at the end like I do. Zellweger's role in Jerry Maguire made her a star and got her up close and personal with Tom Cruise. She found their love scenes a bit of a challenge. They're pretty intimate, but the real intimacy comes from the shared awkwardness, you know. You laugh at it and go through it and it's done. And it's done. Your dad always says less is more. Mm -hmm. To me, more is more. I have to have surgery. She going to die? No, she's not going to die. I want you to move home. Zellweger proved her versatility with her role in One True Thing as a journalist who quit her job to take care of her mother. I have the best mom, and I could never imagine not appreciating everything that she's done for me. I mean, I recognized at a very early age that I was glad my mom was there, you know? I was glad when she came to school to pick me up, and I was happy to see her at the end of the day. Her name's Waters, Irene P. I pulled her over for a broken taillight. We'll have one of our troopers escort you. In Me, Myself, and Irene, Zellweger teamed up with Jim Carrey for a wild ride. I honestly think that she's one of the most incredible actresses out there. That she is like, I've seen all of her work, and she makes me envious, frankly, and insecure about myself. Back then. And uh, it's only a matter of time before she wins the Oscar, and I have to sit there and go, <laughs> really, it's going to be hard. She may not have won an Oscar, but she did win Jim's heart. They were engaged for a year, but called it quits before they got to the altar. But Dr. Rozelle is the finest surgeon on the staff. Zellweger has made her share of sacrifices to get where she is today. Sacrifices like working at a topless bar when she was only 18. She knows it's all part of the price you pay for fame. Well, there's certain sacrifices that you make. Uh, being away from home, being away from your friends, and missing things that you con consider important. Um, but, you know, you make your choices. You just have to pay more attention to it pay more attention to your relationships and to the choices that you make in terms of, you know, what's important to your friends that, that you be part of and things like that. At the Star Trading House of J.T. Marlin, a new generation is building their fortune. The sky's the limit. Are you going to be rich, Seth? <laughs> I hope so. How come I've never heard of this firm? I saw John shredding a bunch of documents. So why would you want to look too deep into something? I mean, you're not curious? What are you doing? Man, these guys are no joke. <laughs> Seth Davis here. Time, Seth. Warrior Room, Tuesday at 2 p.m. Mountain on Shadow Lane. <laughs> Now, I'll be the first to admit that Saturday Night Live has been the training ground for some of our most talented modern-day comedians. Excuse me? So why is it, then, that when the folks at Saturday Night Live decide to make a movie, I come out of the theater more disappointed than the first time I sunk my teeth into a rice cake? No way. Way? Actually, Wayne and his doofus buddy Garth are probably the only two characters that successfully made the transition to the big screen. Well, those two, and of course... No. Right. But the rest of the Saturday Night Live crop of movies seem to draw about as many viewers as an XFL preseason game. Oh. For example, who would have guessed a featured film based on those egg-shaped aliens the Coneheads would disappoint even their most hardcore fans? I find you unacceptable. Hey, Beldar, I'm not the one who accepted that script. Now, making a movie about the Coneheads is a good idea in theory. But, I mean, why make a movie on... Hello. 
I'm Stuart Smalley. Did they really think there was enough fans of this character to fill theaters? No. Well, then should they have really made this movie? You're right. I shouldn't. And what about those Roxbury guys? I mean, two characters we've never even heard speak before. You've got to ask yourself why. Because they're funny. Funny in a four-minute sketch, yes. Funny for two hours? No. And the list of mishits just keep coming. Take, for instance, the inaccurately titled... Superstar! 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 There can only be one explanation for making this film. Total and utter insanity. Their most recent attempt at trying to make a Saturday Night Live character into a movie star was with the ladies' man. Well, that sounds good. No, actually, it sounds like a good waste of my money. It seems to me that a cast member from Saturday Night Live only becomes successful in movies after they leave the show. Adam Sandler, Eddie Murphy, David Spade, and how come Dennis Miller never made a movie for him? You know, I've seen enough people from Saturday Night Live, you know, march into town saying they're going to do the next great comedy and come out in a body bag. Now, I'm not saying I still don't love the show. I just think they should be more selective about the characters they make movies about. Until that time, they should just remain live from New York on Saturday nights. subject matter. Viewer discretion is advised.